Hello guys, Nigel here again with the start of yet another model. Um, this is, as you can see from the instructions, this is the Meng A7 tank, the uh, made by Krupp. I seem to be doing a lot of stuff by Krupp lately. There we go. There's the uh, that's the box front for you. Um, beautiful kit. This one. Uh, we basically it's a buddy build. Um, if you're familiar with this site, Rody Hobby Corner, go and have a look. Uh, that's Ben. Ben Wa is his name. Um, and he's fairly new to YouTube and he's got a new channel up and could do with all the subscribers he can get. So we've agreed to do a build of this kit together. He started his already and what we've agreed is I'm basically going to follow him. So as he does step one and two, I'll do step one and two within a couple of days. There's no time limit. There's no start finish date. Nothing like that. If you want to join in, feel free. Um, but, you know, we're going to restrict it to the A7V tank. So there's a couple of kits out there. One of them's 30 second scale, I believe. So, um, yeah, so if you want to, uh, there's an idea for a diorama there with a, with a wing that wings aircraft, isn't there? Um, <clears throat> perhaps have a, a little um, German Fokker, I don't know, a little uh, J1 has come down and, um, or is it the D1? J1 or the D1, the little one, I can't remember, it's the D1, isn't it? It's come down and... Uh, to bring some messages for these guys to tell them war is over and give up or something, I don't know. So, um, yeah, that could be a little diorama. 30 second scale one of these with a wing nut wings aircraft. That would be great. Um, <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is, as I said, I'm going to build this with Ben. And he's going to be, you know, taking the lead and we'll play follow the leader. So, what I've got to do is, is these two pages, really. Um, this is how far he's got. Or how far his video is it for? I know he might have finished it by now, but uh, he's put a video up yesterday, and this is um, this is how far he's got. So basically, I've got to do this now, and as you can see, we've got a multitude of wheels. I've got to do 16 of these and 14 of these, and they're all on these sprues here. Here's the, the C sprues. Um, I believe. Yes, it is just those. There are no more. So yeah, so we've got one, two, we've got four of those sprues to be uh, to be getting on with. So I'll get on with this, and um, I'll come back to you once I've got the uh, the first sort of step done. So uh, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we got all the parts off the sprue now, and um, I'm all ready to do all this assembly here, which is basically just a load of bogey. So we've got two of those, two of those, and two of those. Um, there's some pretty nasty ejector pin marks to be removed on these on these parts here. You can see on the inside there's the uh, there's the witness of those ejector pin marks there. Um, he's a bit of a clean up actually. Let's give that a quick wipe over. Um, the wheels are all cleaned up off the sprues, but I have noticed. I don't know if you can see it in this shot, but they're actually um, due to moulding restrictions. They've actually got a, um, a draft on them. A draft is, if you can imagine trying to mould something cylindrical, like this bottle here. Um, if it was parallel all the way down, it wouldn't want to come out of the mould. If this was your um, moulding cavity, it wouldn't want to come out. So that way you either have a split mould, so then you get a steam line down the side, which they don't want to do on these wheels. Or what you do is you put a draft, and I guess the best way to explain a draft is like this. You have a, a taper so that it comes out easily. As soon as it moves, like, you know, a few thou, it's free. Um, and obviously this is exaggerated. So, so these wheels have got a draft on them. So what I need to do is glue them together, let them go off, and then I'm going to go around with a sanding stick to, um, to take the, the taper out of them. Because they'll be basically... If you were looking along the length of the track, they'll be like this, whereas they should be obviously dead flat. And I find that makes a hell of a difference with um, stuff like this, even though they'll hardly be seen. But it's not going to take me too long, so I'll get that done. So I'll see you back in a minute. Right, a couple of little builder's tips for you. Um, if you've seen Ben's build, you'll see that what he did with these, these wheels here, C11, C12, he put them along a rule to keep the, the gap at sort of one millimetre or whatever, as I haven't measured it. What I found was these um, these thin aluminium rules I've got fit the gap perfectly. So what I've done is I've put two in a vise like this, done the vise up, and then as I've built them, I've let them dry for 30, 40 seconds, and then slid them down over here and given them a twist 
like so and then what you, you do then you know that those wheels are all parallel and then what I've done is taken them out of the vise taped up one end taken them out of the vise taped up the other end and now I've got this jig with them all sat in and I can push them down and turn them and make sure that, and I know they're all parallel so that's a great tip um, there from Ben thank you mate that's um, the guy I'm doing this buddy build with over at Rody Hobby Corner and uh, I'll put a link at the bottom of the um, video to his uh, to his site so you can go and have a look at what he's doing. Um, <clears throat> he's also doing a build on that um, mini art ball tank, which I must get myself as well. I, if I'd known he was doing it, I would have done a buddy build on that. Something looks it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So basically, um, yeah. Thanks for that. A tip from me um, with these with these wheels here, making sure these stay parallel. These wheels which are the C9, C10 wheels. I always, I've got these, these two metal blocks and I stand them on there and then I stand another metal block on top, a little bit of pressure, and that sort of squares all them up as well to make sure they're all, um, they all remain parallel because the last thing you want is wonky wheels. And these little trays, if you wonder where these come from, um, I can't think which make it, is it butchers? There's a, there's a dog food and there's the, the, some of them come in white and some of them come in black. And they're absolutely brilliant for, for putting model parts in. Obviously, you need to go through the dishwasher first. But um, if you have got a dog, well, I was saying if you have got a dog, why would you be buying these if you didn't have a dog? Unless you like dog food. Um, but basically, um, you can uh, you can put them through the dishwasher and clean them. But, but make sure you put them away somewhere safe. Because my dog can still sniff these out even after they've been through the dishwasher. And um, yeah, if you had plastic parts in there... And, your dog got on your bench and ate the parts. I don't think you'd be very happy. So, um, yeah, great things. Word of warning, take heed. But they're absolutely brilliant here. I see this one's um, Harry GF Chicken. That's right, it's Harry Bow. <laughs> no, it's um, Harrington's, that's it. It's Harrington's dog food. So anyway, there's a little tip for you, a couple of tips. One from me and uh, one from Ben. One of the issues with these wheels, if you um, when you glue them together, is you'd have seen this on Ben's video if you've watched it that when you glue them together you're going to get some glue oozing into the into the bore from the from the seam um, I suppose you've got two options you could either not glue them because they're going to go over these pins on part C7 here and you'll see that they won't fit on with the glue in there they won't go over they'll go they'll go so far but they won't push past there rather than force them best to drill them out so I've got a drill here which is um, one millimeter I'm just gonna use my little Tamiya battery drill if you haven't got one of these get one you actually build it yourself it's like a little, um, little kit and they're wonderful things and then you'll see that once you've done that you can just pop that on like so so um spend a while doing this now okay so now we're gonna look at assembling these bogies um, we've got three different styles and we've got to make two of each, so six in total. Um, pattern A has got three of the rimmed wheels, two plain. Pattern B has got three of the plain, two rimmed, and these are using C parts for the frames. And then we've got this one here, pattern C, which has got three rimmed wheels, two plain, and we're using D parts for the actual frame itself. Um, I don't really understand why they've done that other than there's four C sprues and it saved them putting another C sprue in the box so they've made these two on the D sprue. Um, what is interesting is when you get these off the sprue on C then they're covered in um, ejector pin marks and two of them are those Z pin types that have the great big lug sticking out of which you have to cut off but then when you actually look at the D parts there's no ejector pin marks at all. So very strange. Not that it really matters, it's an invisible area but if they could do this without ejector pin marks, why didn't they do this without ejector pin marks? So anyway, here's one I prepared earlier. So I've put these these wheels on and um, they're all free to turn. Now looking at this, the way I would suggest putting this together, if you look at these wheels here, they've got like a raised area in the centre um, and these don't. So what I would suggest is when you glue these together is only glue those wheels, don't glue the, um, the plain wheels. So I'm going to use this extra thin quick setting um, and I'm just going to put a tiny dab in there, a tiny dab in there and a tiny dab in there. 
Now I've put too much in that middle one, so I want to get rid of some of that. So just touch it with my finger. There we go, gone. And then I'm going to put this together like so. And that's that. Is it or not? Does that go on together? Yeah. So that's gone. It's all a bit sort of wobbly, but once it gets glued to the uh, actual frame, it'll be fine. And I'm just going to check all the wheels turn absolutely fine still. Yep. So that's glued together. Give it a good squeeze. And the only reason I've used the quick setting, a little tip for um, newer modelers, this stuff here, it's the same. This is your standard Tammy Extra Thin. This is the quick setting one. It's got a lighter green top. It's sold everywhere. It does smell very strong compared to this one. But the beauty of it is it dries very, very quickly. Hence it being called quick setting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, basically um, with stuff like this, if you did get any glue on the wheel, if you just sit there and keep turning the wheel, within a couple of minutes the glue will have dried and you'll feel the wheel free off. So the only thing you can do, if you, if you use these floury skinny sanders, you can actually stick this wheel on here. It fits perfectly. And uh, you can roll that along there and you know, make sure the wheels stay free. So there we go, that's that one done. So I'll do the rest of these then and come back to you. And the other thing I've done is I've assembled this down here. These are the um, left and right idler wheels and the actual drive sprockets themselves. Remember this is World War One. this is German. This is Germany's first ever tracked vehicle. So you can see here we've got the left and right idlers and they're all just snapped together parts. Um, you've got to be looking for your your slot there which is your identification so you can see we've got the one side is plain and one side has a slot in it here so we can see we've got a left and right there and this arm here I guess I'm guessing this is part of the tensioner mechanism here so and there's the sprockets with this lovely great bulbous nut or bolt on the front which, uh, it's got a massive great sp um, sprue lump on that you've got a cut off and do some clean up this uh it's lovely very nice big ball <laughs> so i don't know where that's gonna go so um there we have it then guys so i'll call that a day for now so i've done basically step one and then next funnily enough is step two um and i'll do this in another video and maybe even start into step three, which is putting the chassis together. And I can tell you a story about this chassis on the next video as well. So thanks for watching. Um, pop over to Rody Hobbers, Rody Hobby's Corner site and have a look at what he's up to over there. It's basically the same as I'm doing here. Um, but I'm sure we'll do stuff differently, especially start getting to painting and detailing and stuff. So, um, yeah, get on over there and have a look at his. I'll put a link to the uh, link to it on the bottom of this, this video. And... Um, yeah, please like and subscribe. Hit that subscription, the uh, subscription notifications bell, and you'll get uh, alerts then when I put the next video up. Um, so I'll see you all very soon, and thanks for watching, and uh, happy modeling. Bye bye.